Good evening, everyone. Hear the call to worship tonight. On this day, Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this day, Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. On this day, Christ took a towel and washed his disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. On this day, Christ our God gave us this holy feast that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection. Bob, I invite you to come and read the scriptures from Exodus. The scripture from Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Verses 11 through 14. I knew I should have took my glasses. <laughs> In this manner, so we're skipping ahead as to how you should eat this lamb. In this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you or destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day for you will be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. The word of God for the people of God. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, and welcome to Meeting Place. So glad you could come out and join us and that we could have this joint service of worship tonight on Monday, Thursday. Uh, I'd like to invite you to stand and, and just sing a song with us to enter into worship tonight. When the darkness fills my senses, when my blind from your touch Jesus come when my burden keeps me doubting when my memories take the place of you Jesus come and 
When my blindness keeps me from your touch, Jesus, come. And when my burden keeps me doubting, when my Take the place of you Jesus come And I'll follow you there To the place where your unfailing love it's your unfailing love your unfailing love it's your unfailing love over me again over me over me Over me again Over me again Now you may be seated. Thank you. Would you join me together in the prayers of the people? And I believe they'll be up here on the screen. Holy God, we come to worship in the gathering shadows of Jesus' suffering and death. We come with his friends, the men and women who have followed him in every place and generation to live once again this story of service and betrayal, of weakness and courage. We come to witness your love in action. Be with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Vandy, would you come and read the scriptures? First Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, 
the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Reading from John 13, 1 through 17. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He, kn he now showed the disciples the full extent of his love. It was time for supper, and the devil had already enticed Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to carry out his plan to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with a the towel he had around him. When he came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, why are you washing my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now why I am doing it. Someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, but if I don't wash your, you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash, except for the feet, to be entirely clean. And you are clean, but that isn't true of everyone here. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on the robe again, and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because it's true. And since I, the Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. How true it is that a servant is not greater than his master nor are messengers more important than the one who sends them. You know these things, now do them. This is the path of blessing. And down to John 13, 31b through 35. Jesus said, the time has come for me, the son of man to enter into my glory and God will receive glory because of all that happens to me. And God will bring me into his glory very soon. Dear children, how brief are these moments before I must go away and leave you. Then, though you search for me, you cannot come to me, just as I told the Jewish leaders. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Thank you to all the readers. Before I start tonight, Brothers and sisters of the meeting place, of meeting place, I want to thank you for inviting the congregation of the Kanduskeg Union Church to come and worship with you tonight during Holy Week. I am thankful that we have developed such a spirit of camaraderie between the two congregations, and I hope and pray it lasts for many years. In order to properly understand tonight's gospel reading from the Gospel of John, 
it's important to find the context of the story. That is, before we jump into the story, it's best if we have some context. If we were in the theater tonight, which we kind of are, I would say let us set the stage. Four days before our story tonight from the gospel, Jesus rides into the holy city of Jerusalem on the back of a donkey with crowds declaring his messiahship with their palm branches and coats. Some scholars believe that on the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, there were between 100,000 and 250,000 people there to celebrate the Passover. But the crowds were expecting Jesus to be something that he was not. They were expecting a political leader, a nationalist, a nationalist, someone that would make Jerusalem great again, someone that would deliver the people from the hands of the oppressive Romans. And of course, that is not what they got. Jesus did not throw the Romans out. Jesus went into the temple and threw the money changers out. <laughs> they were expecting a political deliverer. And instead, Jesus delivered the house of prayer from abusers. As Jesus made it clear, he was not there to fulfill the will of the people the crowds, they began to turn from favorable to unfavorable towards him. The crowds began to turn away from Jesus. As the crowds turned away, Jesus begins to speak to his circle of disciples about how soon he, he would be betrayed and turned over to be killed. And Jesus talked to his disciples about the destruction of the temple, about the end of the age. And by the time we get to our story from, our, from the gospel reading tonight, the crowds which were in the tens of thousands, maybe even the hundreds of thousands, have reduced themselves to the twelve apostles and Jesus, thirteen people. They are in a room together celebrating a meal of the Passover season. And of course, it was not like how Leonardo da Vinci painted it. <laughs> they were not all sitting on one side of a table. More than likely, they were reclining around a table, as was custom of first century Palestine, and in fact, still custom at many places in the region. Going into the next few minutes, the, the rest of my homily, I'd like to just share with you three observations about this text tonight that maybe will help us as we journey to know Jesus Christ and how he lived. This evening's gospel reading says, He, that is Jesus, got up from a meal, the meal, took, out his outer, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Whether by the power of the Spirit or by some inner knowing, Jesus knew that he was going to be turned over to the authorities to be killed soon. And with less than 24 hours to go to teach his disciples, Jesus, I believe, leaves them the best lesson for last. <laughs> you see, the master does a role reversal and takes on the role of the servant. In other words, the Lord becomes the slave. The text says that Jesus removed his outer coat, wraps the towel around his waist, pours a, a, a basin full of water, and then begins to wash the dirty and well-worn feet of his disciples, including the one who would betray him and including the one who would deny him. 
What humility. In fact, we could call it what great humility we see here. You see, the divine is not taking his place on high, uh, on the top of some mountain, or uh, in the tower of some uh, the castle. Here, the divine, the Son of God, is washing the dirt off the feet of those who still don't understand his purpose or who he is. Taking the lower place, being humble, being a servant to all, of course, is the great stone in the kingdom of God and how it operates. James, the brother of Jesus, would later write in one of his, uh, the, write in his letter, God gives grace to the humble, but opposes the proud. The second thought comes from the next part of the text. Jesus comes to Simon Peter, who says to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't realize now what I am doing, but later you'll understand. No, said Peter, you'll never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you is. I don't know about you, dear brothers and sisters, but I love Simon Peter. <laughs> and, it's pro and it's probably and primarily because he gives me hope. If you are familiar with the stories of the gospel, the gospels, you'll know the story of Simon Peter. He is the fisherman turned disciple. He is the one who was first to confess the Messiahship of Jesus Christ. He, he was the one who walked on water. And here he is, only hours away from the betrayal and murder of Jesus. And after three and a half years of walking with Jesus, he still doesn't get what Jesus is doing. And Jesus is not mad at him. And Jesus is not upset with him. And Jesus doesn't treat Simon Peter cruelly. Jesus is so tender with Simon Peter. Jesus simply says to, to Simon Peter, you, you still don't understand it, but one day you will. <laughs> I know there are many here tonight that have been in church for a long time. Many of us have worshipped together over the years. And we probably thought we knew what Jesus was doing. We thought we understood how the Spirit moved and how the kingdom of God operated. We thought we had the market on knowing how God was working. When the reality is, the reality was, and, and kind of still is in some way, we're still very much like Simon Peter. We don't understand as much as we pretend to, but Jesus is revealing things to us as we journey along. And thankfully, Jesus is dealing with us very tenderly as we long to know him and his ways. Simon Peter gives me hope, and I hope he gives you hope. Looking further into the text, John writes, My children, I will be with you only a little longer, Jesus speaking. You will look for me, and just as I told you, the, told the Jews, that is the Jewish authorities, the, the, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, so, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot go. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. I find it so interesting that John, the, the, the person who the other Gospels say, laid his head on the breast of Christ during this event, on the uh, Passover event, 
He, he doesn't mention what the other gospel writers mention. The other gospels give us the story that Jesus took bread and wine and shared it with the disciples, commanding them to remember him whenever they drank and eat or ate the, eat the bread. Jesus does not, uh, excuse me, John doesn't give us that part of the story in his gospel. Sometimes some scholars, some writers describe John as the apostle of love. And here we see, see his leanings. He does not write about the commandment to remember Jesus in the breaking of bread and, and drinking of wine. He gives attention to Jesus' commandment of love. Some of us come from traditions where women didn't cut their hair or wear makeup. And that was seen as a sign of being a proper Christian. Some of us come from very strong King James Version only Bible believing backgrounds. That was seen as a sign of being a, a Christian. Some come from traditions where baptism is done in certain ways. And that was seen as a sign of being a proper Christian. Some of us were in churches that stressed you could only listen to Christian music because everything else in the way of music was from the devil. Some of us came from churches who did not accept our gay brothers and, and lesbian sisters. And that was a sign of being a proper Christian. Some of us came from churches where you had to vote Republican because that is seen as the political party of Jesus. But Jesus' command to us here in John's gospel is that we love one another. If we love one another, we are Jesus' disciples. Very, very easy, very plain. What kind of love does Jesus ask us to love each other with? It is a radical, unconditional love that truly has great concern with others' welfare and well-being. My brothers and my sisters, even if folks don't believe like us, if they don't believe like you, guess what? We are commanded by Jesus to love them, to care for them, to be concerned with their well-being, their welfare. Even if, these, even if people hold a different view, theologically, politically, whatever, guess what? Jesus commands us to love them, radically, unconditionally love them. Even if they say terrible things about you on Facebook. <laughs> We're commanded to love them, radically, unconditional love. Brothers and sisters, on this Monday, Thursday, I hope and pray that we don't just renew our love for Jesus when we break bread and drink wine together, but that we use tonight as an opportunity to renew our love for one another and for those around us. Pray that we would take serious the commandment of love. Amen. Thank you, Matt. That was wonderful. We uh, gather tonight as a community in need of a Savior. We offer our honest confession in faith and in trust in our covenant God, knowing that God hears our voice. So as we prepare to come to the table tonight together, would you say this prayer of confession together with me? Forgive and heal us by your steadfast love made known to us in the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now this is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. 
come because it is the Lord who invites you. It's his will that those who want him should meet him here. We invite you to come to the table. When I saw the cleansing fountain assurance of pardon tonight. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Jesus we remember tonight is the Savior of the world. In Christ we are forgiven, and through him God abides even with us. Well, just before we go out, I'd invite you to stand and let's sing this song together. It's been so 
uh, such a pleasure for us to, to host this service tonight. We look forward to worshiping again with you, you folks, soon. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for me, for me, for me, for me. He gave it all for the lamb that was slain worthy is the lamb that was slain worthy is the lamb that was slain for me for me for me the lamb that was slain worthy is the lamb that was slain worthy is the lamb that was slain hallelujah king forever Savior, we will sing. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for me, for me, for me, for me. He gave it all for We just worship you tonight for all that you gave for us that day 2,000 years ago. We ask that you go with us, bless this time together, and our, as we keep us safe as we travel to our homes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.